welcome back and for anyone who's new welcome today it is a rainy morning here in New England and this is actually one of my favorite times to go and get in the woods uh, especially now in the summertime bright sunny clear days tends to be when everyone's out uh, chomping along or trudging along in the woods where on rainy days like this morning it tends to be uh, much quieter um, which is when I prefer to go. I am going today on the hunt for some blackberries here. They are starting to uh, blossom especially in sunny spots so I'm going to see what I can find. Blueberries will be starting to come up. Um, I'm also on the hunt for some mint, but that's just to replant somewhere. Um, and yeah, so come along with me. I'm going to show you one of my uh, favorite hiking spots just for, gosh, just for being there. There's no other, like, uh, there's no secret foraging spots. There's no, uh, I just really like the energy of this preserve specifically. So I hope you enjoy this type of thing. I'm trying to, uh, well, I'm trying to get on the trails and when I do get on the trails to record a video to show all of these beautiful places within Rhode Island specifically since I'm here that are just, that I missed when I was gone. But yet, uh, I don't know, I wanna share these magical places to encourage you to get outside and to just experience all that mother nature has to offer. Today I'm wearing shoes, normally I'm barefoot walking through and just really being in tune and in touch. Uh, where today I'm doing a little more walking, uh, but other times I'll just put on a dress and I'll go barefoot. Uh, but this is my all time, I think one of my favorite hikes in Rhode Island and that's gonna be uh, King Benson Preserve in Saunderstown. Enjoy, I hope you like this. Enjoy being in nature with me and I hope honestly that you can feel just the absolute peace and love that I feel when I am uh, when I am at home. I always like to take a basket with me, so that way if I find things, I have the opportunity to carry them out. Although, to be honest, most of the time I come back with rocks in the basket. <laughs> <laughs> when I come into the woods, I never bring a phone with me. I do bring my camera, but I don't ever bring a phone and my eyes are usually up or down. And as I was walking, I noticed all these little bright orange mycelium bunches, which is a beautiful contrast. The lush green ferns and all the green. There are tons of blackberry bushes just right along the path, but they haven't started to ripen here in the woods. There's also some blueberries, but they're not ripe yet either. Some more mycelium growing. I have always loved this tree. It has all of these burls or circles all over it, which are just, I don't know. They've just always been so magical to me. So there are two reasons why I really love hiking and coming here. Uh, one, we're about to walk up on 
and then the other I'll show you in a few minutes. There are just certain places within this beautiful earth that just have these, I don't know, this magical energy to it. And this place, in this area is one of them. Let me show you. This doesn't look like much, but when we've had a lot of rain, all down here comes like rushing with water and it is just so, like in August when it gets really like rainy, this is such a fun place to be. And all throughout these rocks and all throughout these hills are large pieces of quartz. Again, why my basket? It's sometimes heavier when I leave. But it's such a great place for the kids to play. And it's just so alive. Some more mycelium. This is in the path though, so it's gotten stepped on. So we are coming up my real favorite part of this hiking trail. I, I can't explain it, I don't know why. Well, I do know why. Maybe I'll sit down and explain it afterward, but let me show you some magic. I wanted to share some of the magic of um, this place specifically. So the trees that you just saw, the first time I was here, I had this big piece of rose quartz with me. It was in the shape of a heart and I had a dress on. And when I got to those trees, I just got this overwhelming feeling of like childhood joy. And so I like put my hand in my pocket, I like held onto the stone, I like closed my eyes and I just like ran through the trees. And as I was doing that, I could hear footsteps running alongside of me, much like heavier and larger, but definite footsteps. And I had this like, uh, this energy of like, hmm, fairy, Sasquatch, very like not of this world or not of this current world. And so every time I come here, I leave some type of offering, uh, whether that's me leaving a stone that I found or today I am picking up trash while I'm here as my offering. Uh, I can feel this higher energy that's just become so magical.
but I hope you can feel it through this video. I just wanted to share that the reason I either bring an offering, as I said, or I do something when I feel these higher energies is that my mind wants to tell me that these things aren't real or they're like make-believe and what I'm feeling isn't true. And so what I like to do to reprogram my mind or to connect my brain and my mind with my body is by leaving these offerings or doing something physical with the intention of it being for this higher energy, these higher beings, are just as different. No, higher is not the right word. It's different. It's just a different frequency than human beings. Uh, by doing this, it helps to separate within my brain that the this is real, this energy is here, and it is magic. Um, which is a lot of what I find when I come into nature is the... I always call it higher magic, but it's just it's because it feels so much lighter. And when we think light, we think raising up which we go we to associate with higher uh, when really it's just a lighter less dense feeling and now that i'm protected under the trees it's no longer raining on me rock that's beckoning me. Then when I get in the woods sometimes I get the feeling that I'm that I want to go somewhere. I get this like nudge. It says come over here and I follow it. Usually, that's a spot where I can find some peace and some meditation so that me in the woods or wherever I am can share energy. I just wanted to talk about something seemingly random, but I don't think that it is. Wardrobe, what you wear into the woods. For me, it's all about material. Uh, whenever I'm exploring, as long as I'm wearing things that are cotton or linen, doesn't matter what it is. These jeans have no spandex in them. My shirt is 100% cotton. My jacket's a little differently, but it is raining, and so this does keep the rain away. Um, but with the clothes that I'm wearing, it helps me to be more connected with nature when the air can move through everything. When you start wearing synthetic materials, the rayon, the nylon, the spandex, um, air can't move through it. And so you're kind of trapping all of your sweat, your energy, everything within your body, where I like to wear fabrics that are more breathable. So you keep seeing me take off my coat. So that way I can just, be a little bit more connected. And I think that the jeans are a little bit more comfortable than like the spandex pants in my own personal experience.
This is a great mycelium. This is ghost pipe. It's something that should definitely only be handled by a professional, but it's th uh, it is known to help with pain and uh, like nerve damage. You really don't find these stone walls anywhere but New England. It's quite magical to just walk along a place and really to know someone's been here before you because of these walls everywhere. I just finished up my hike here and I just wanted to say thank you for hanging out with me and sticking around. If you're in Rhode Island, definitely check out this beautiful place. And if you do end up checking it out, let me know uh, and enjoy. But if you're not in Rhode Island, let this inspire you to get out somewhere and to just explore this beautiful country that we have. And no matter where you are, there are these beautiful pieces of nature that invite you in to turn off your brain and slow down. I love you.